What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper channel coming to you with another edition of Liddy's Leans, Likes, and Locks MLB. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Goes a long way for me on this video. Goes a long way for you. That way you become a prize whenever great content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods. The NBA Finals just kicked off, but I'm here. I am grinding out this 15 game. Every team in play here on this MLB slate. Looking forward to it. Seven gamer that on Thursday. It was going okay here. Kind of meandering through. Going to probably be up a little bit here. Could get one home run from any of these Minnesota Twins. That would be nice. Ended up off of that under wild stuff. Uh, we had changed in pitchers. We have Framber Valdez now pitching here on Friday. Different pieces of news here and there. I'm going to talk you through the ins and outs of everything that I'm noticing and give you my leans, my likes, my locks. We got producer Jacob alongside us here. Looking forward to rounding out the work week here together. It's always better when we're together, but that's creepy. And my wife... Anyway, she's back. Bet MGM. These are great things. They're back too. Uh, on this program, happy to have them. Two months that you're going to get of the premium Discord. You sign up for that. I think it's sitting right here. Yeah. Two months of that when you sign up using promo code OS Insider. That, my friends, is great stuff because it's not just me, but Aton Chander hitting another no run first inning or Nerfy and a Yerfy. Uh, he's got all of the great parlays in the premium Discord. We also have uh, my guy, Ben Raza. King of the golf streets. We got the king of the NASCAR streets, Isaiah. So many great people, so little time to jump in. So why don't you just sign up at BetMGM and get that free bet that you're going to be firing up? Mainly what happens, it's not necessarily a free bet. That's the wrong way of putting it. What it is, is it's a bet that you get. And if it loses, you're going to get bonus bets back up to that number. So if you put in $50, you bet 50 loses, you're going to get $50 in bonus bets back. And if you bet 50 and you win, Keep the money and move along with your day. So great stuff over at BetMGM. I'll talk about them a little bit later. Only if you're 21 and over is that deal available. And if you have a gambling problem, please call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. All righty, y'all. Lots to get to. So little time. Let's roll to the picks. We get our day underway at Great American Small Park, as I always like to call it. We have Corbin Burns, very serviceable pitcher here on the mound. Former Cy well, yeah, former Cy Young winner from two seasons ago. Brandon Williamson. Brandon Williamson. Oh, sounds like an English, English guy I do not want to have a beer with. None of the Tad Lasso uh, people. Also, did people like the finale? I haven't watched the finale yet. No spoilers. But Brandon Williamson, not very good at the old pitching. 579 expected slugging thus far in his big league career. 19% K rate. He's going through some of the pitch mix because, well, he has a lot of them. Four seamer, cutter, slider, change up, and... Well, each one seems to be worse than the last. So he's only 25. I don't want to go out of my way to pick on the southpaw too much here. There's really no velocity, no fastball. Excuse me. Mm, hiccup. Uh, no fastball velocity that we're really looking at either. Uh, yikes. He's not very good. And that's really kind of the end of it. Corbin Burns is very good at pitching. Now, traditionally, we would be looking at this as an absolute smash spot going up against Cincinnati, but I have a couple of reservations with Corbin Burns, and it's not anything other than, well, where did the strikeouts go? 22.3%, 9.1% walk rate. Those are the kind of things where you can run into some unlucky innings from here from, from time to time. And considering for the last three seasons previously, he hadn't had an expected ERA over 3.11. It's up to 3.79, and we're just finding some issues there's the velocity down a mile per hour on the cutter four seamer doesn't really throw it although he can throw it up to 96 if he needs to uh 95.4 doesn't hasn't even thrown a fastball here it's just basically a sinker that's added to the mix now the curveball that's the calling card if you can get to that thing get ahead and counts you're in a really really good spot 138 batting average against 120 expected batting average Somehow has been getting unlucky with that pitch. That is wild to say out loud with a 39.7% whip percentage. But you just go over to the odds because, again, this is a betting program. And we're looking at minus 170 as the best available line. Minus 185, the best available line. Uh, well, actually, no, minus 180 over a DraftKings Sportsbook that I would have access to. That has to be a pass, my friends. I hate, I hate it, I hate it. But I can't possibly be firing this one up here in bulk. Yes, Cincinnati's terrible with an 89 WRC plus against right-handed pitching. Yes, there are some definite concerns on the other side in terms of uh, what Mr. Williamson's going to be giving Cincinnati. And yet, I think it's just a stay away. So no play for me in this early one. Maybe some home run props show up. They normally do in Great American Small Park. Not that books don't know that it's the easiest ballpark to hit it out of, but just going to be a little bit trepidatious to get our day going. 
kind of the story of these early window of games. Nothing that really intrigues me here. We have Oakland, we have Miami, and well, Miami, we have a decent enough pitcher there in Edward Cabrera. He definitely racks up the strikeouts, definitely walks too many people as well. 28.4% K rate, 15.1% walk rate, respectively. 42.6% hard hit percentage. Well, it is what it is, but I think this is just a story of like, what are we going to get out of this opening situation that we have going to Hogan Harris? Now, it sounds like Fujinama, who's just, uh, or Fujinami, excuse me, he's a bullpen arm and, well, just like all bullpen arms in Oakland, he's terrible. Uh, 1.97 whip it is. There we go. Had to double check. 12 ERA. And that's in, I mean, what? We have an all of 30 inning sample size. That is so bad. There aren't really words for it. He's a righty. And he'll be making way, though, for Hogan Harris, who, again, I think he's supposed to be starting here in this one. But he was in AAA Las Vegas. I think you've heard me talk about the P- uh, the PCL a million times on this program, Pacific Coast League, and how it inflates numbers. But he had a pretty decent number of uh, 25 punch outs over 26 in the third innings, 3.42 ERA, 1.18 whip at that level. That's pretty decent. It has not shown up in just five and a third innings so far here in the bigs against the Mets in Houston. But this is Miami we're talking about here. Miami, they're no good. So it's an interesting spot. My spreadsheet has this as Miami minus one and a half, and it's close to a play. And that's always because you put a bullpen over a 6.50 expected ERA bullpen, and you have Fujinami as the starter for an inning or two. That's enough to just even know his presence could be on the field to just target away. You know, swing away, Merrill, swing away. I brought that up earlier. Signs, we can't go back to that. But uh, we can go back to targeting Oakland on a different date when it's not Miami. I think we're just going to be staying away. If there were some lefties we could be rolling out from Oakland, that would be nice because then, well, I don't know. Jorge Soler is going to probably hit a home run because, again, Hogan Harris is a lefty. I'm double thinking this. I can't do it. Miami minus one and a half, just going to be a lean. We're going to show some restraint. Jorge Soler probably going to go yard, though. Enjoy that one. And our last lean before we at least accelerate into the program here. We have Philadelphia, we have Washington, and I expected to have a play stand out from this one in the old odds department. And I digress, there is not. Zach Wheeler on the mound, very good at the old pitching for Philadelphia. Josiah Gray, I don't know what happened to the case because that used to be something he had, but now he's just found ways to be an effective pitcher, which I think most big league clubs, they would take that over it. 4.18 expected ERA, that's the best results he's had so far in his three big league seasons. But the K's have fallen off precipitously, and I am a little bit worried that Josiah Gray, as the weather heats up there in all Washington, as it gets to be super swarmy, as people are wearing their suits, walking into the Capitol building, hanging out, they're going to be sweated through everything, and then they're going to have Steven Strasburg syndrome, which if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. The guy was terrible in like super hot weather games, and I don't normally read into that stuff, but it was a confirmed thing for Steven Strasburg. What happened to him? I know he's getting paid still from Washington. I'll take a look into that after the program. But Josiah Gray, the K rate, 24.8% in 2021. 22 is 23.7%. Sub 20% right now, 19.1% K rate. The launch angles come down on stuff. The ground ball rate has come up. So yay in those departments. But again, I'm very nervous that as it heats up, he might be a walking beanbag chair once again if he's not getting those swings and misses. As for Zach Wheeler, he's just good. 27.7% K rate, 337 expected slugging, and a 288 XWOBA. You look at this Washington team, they're terrible. 87th, uh, sorry, 87 WRC plus uh, going up against right-handed pitching. The one thing that they do do is avoid strikeouts for the most part. 19.2%, that's second best in baseball against right-handed pitching. But I repeat, this is Zach Wheeler. He's no ordinary pitcher. I think he'll still get some swings and misses. However, there is no number that stands out to me. Uh, as I go through this game on the run line, it's about effective. I don't want to be laying minus 105. I would want even money or better in that department. And then in terms of just money line, if you're not uh, getting access to bet 365 where it's minus 175, there's no way I'm betting this at minus 189 or worse, uh, which we have over at Caesar Sportsbook. So is what it is under eight and a half. The only thing that even remotely stands out to me here, and I still will not be betting it on Friday. Let's put the foot on the gas and go real fast to St. Louis, Pittsburgh. Finally, Eric, let's talk some plays. Again, we have freaking, what, 12 more games to get to. I think we'll have some plays to be firing up. But Ronzi Contreras on the mound here for the home team. 350x Woba, 16.4% K rate, 10.5% walk rate, no good. Jack Flaherty, starting to see 
Uh, have you forgot about Jack? You don't know Jack. Jack Squat. Jack O' Lantern. Jack Johnson. Okay, why am I blanking? I would be ter terrible at some of those trivia games. I th I'm good at thinking on my feet for things, but you know, with the 20 seconds of the countdown and you put pressure on yourself to remember the Jack joke? No, it's fine. It wasn't even a joke. I was just listing off things. 34.8% uh, hard hit percentage, 374 expected slugging, 13.5% walk rate has been the concern constantly here. Just leaving too many guys on the base paths and getting a little too lucky in that department. However, we've seen some bad outings from a lot of these St. Louis pitchers. I think he's starting to, to bring it back a little bit here now. Four straight starts where he hasn't given up more than three runs, which is you know, three's a decent amount, but that's actual improvement since that Milwaukee start where he had seven innings pitch, 10 Ks. Life was fantastic. So seven earned in his last four. That is huge improvements considering the 4.81 ERA, 1.53 whip. And I don't know. I just think of that Dodgers game where he gave up 10 earned. Can I get, can I get, you know, bullpen? Can I get lefty in there? Can, just laying, laying your dude out to dry there. It was not going well. It was never going to go well. But it's going to go well for Nolan Gorman here heading to Pittsburgh. We have seen some lefty power dominate in this park from time to time. Now, it's not necessarily something you should expect. It's kind of like an Anthony Rizzo thing. Go back and look at his numbers here in this park. Not that I ever really read into individual stuff like that. It has more to do with what pitch, uh, Pittsburgh's pitching staff looks like. And they're just not all that good. It is what it is. And I like Rosie Contreras, or at least I did coming into the bigs. 16.4% K rate. If he is not getting swings and misses, he is so damn hittable. So give me lefties. Give me, if there's some Lars Newbar numbers that make sense with this 44.4% hard hit percentage, I can get behind that too. But I want the big bopper, the guy with the over 60 score in terms of fan graphs, power score, and well, 536 expected slugging, 49.6% hard hit percentage with a 20 degree average launch angle. He's lofting it, baby. It's not going on the ground. And that makes me excited when you have a beanbag chair like Ronzi Contreras on the mound. So Nolan Gorman, yeah, it's a lean. But if I'm getting better than plus 335 is the kind of break-even number I have on this, it will be a play on my card for Friday. Let's get to a lock, shall we? This will be fun. We have Tyler Glass now, who I haven't been able to talk about yet. I think he pitched over the weekend. This is an arm I'm in love with. I have been from the get-go. Bounced around some places, ends up at Tampa Bay. He had some issues post-sticky stuff. Ended up having to get Tommy John surgery because he just said that it hurt his grip. It didn't feel right to him. And, well, he ends up hurting his elbow. He's been out for a hot second. But, boy, the stuff looked electric immediately. And he's got Garrett Whitlock on the other side of this one. Garrett Whitlock stuff never looks electric. He can limit hard hit to a certain extent. 35.9% hard hit percentage. 467 expected slugging is not good though, nor is an 18.1% K rate. He throws only sinker change up. And well, if there's no deception with those two pitches, got Tampa Bay on the other side. Tampa Bay, they hit balls far. A 128 WRC plus going up against right-handed pitching in this, this season. That is the best by 13 runs created. That is a wild, wild statistic. A two, well, 208 ISO. That's second best in baseball, just behind the Dodgers. They're pretty good too. Those teams, it's almost like the best analytic departments continue to find ways to be good. You always just project them for more wins than you think. It's just is what it is. But let's go into Tyler Glass now here and why this is a lock button for me. He goes four seamer slider curve. Those are his three pitches. And you go back to some of his 2022 numbers, pre-injury, he was outrageous. 1.35 ERA. It did have a 5.75 expected ERA, but that was literally just 114 total pitches. Uh, you go back the previous season to 2021, and this is your baseline. Over 1,300 pitches thrown, a 2.74 expected ERA, a 36.2% K rate. We're talking as good a stuff as you will find in the game of baseball, friends. So I don't know why I said it like that, but it means I'm building dramatic tension to lead you to, to Tampa Bay Moneyline. Yes, I get it. There are some definite lefty pieces. We talk about them every time on this program, but I do not care, friends. It's my first chance to go bet Tyler Glass now. Is he going to pitch a full allotment of pitches? No. His first outing out, he goes for 83. But you give me 90 pitches of Tyler Glass now, and I will take my chances. Do pay attention to this weather, folks. 
Be careful. Do not go crazy for this one in the event that, well, if they start in a late, like a, if it ends up being like a late start, I'd be more encouraged where I know I'm getting the glass now starter bust. But if this game starts wet, always be careful of these locks in those kinds of scenarios because, well, bullpen to bullpen, I would not want to be laying this kind of juice with these two lineups. But as it stands right now, knowing it's glass now, knowing opening line at DraftKings Sportsbook minus 125, give me that every single day of the week. Do not give me anything from this game, though. That is Toronto and the Mets. We've got Chris Bassett and Justin Verlander, two fantastic pitchers on the mound. And, well, inherently, what I think a lot of people do, what my instincts are to do, hey, you should go take some unders on things. We should take a look at what the unders look like. Well, it's a little bit difficult when you talk about how good and potent these lineups are, especially at the top of the order for Toronto and the Mets. Uh, Going to be hard to talk myself into targeting either one of them. Toronto, 113 WRC+. plus. A 20.6% K rate. They do not strike out against righties all that much. And then you look at the Mets. I know we gave them a hard time at the beginning of the season, but I don't know. Pete Alonso, Francisco Lindor, they're waking up, baby. I'm waking up. I feel it. No, I do not feel anything with this game. A 105 WRC plus, 19.6% K rate. Pass all the way around. I'm just saying, just to cover the pitchers for you, Chris Bassett, 32.8% hard hit percentage is really good. Not getting nearly as many swings and misses. He would definitely be the more targetable of the two. But that is definitely demonstrated by the fact that the Mets are at minus 134. And Justin Verlander fighting to get Ks himself with just an 18.2% K rate in this early season for him. He and Max Scherzer both had some injuries, had some late starts to things. He's just getting the gears cooking. So I'm not going to be backing them at minus 135 based on the numbers. So what are we doing? Under to eight and a half. Again, that's the inherent trigger with these kind of pitchers on the mound. But... They've been a little bit more targetable than in years past. I think we just stay away considering I have this one projected for right at eight runs. That under didn't look good, but this under does. We're looking at Seattle and Texas and two studs on the mound. Luis Castillo here for the road team, the Mariners, going up against John Gray. And similar to what we just talked about there for the Mets in Toronto, where Justin Verlander, tough spot facing Toronto, really tough spot here for Luis Castillo. He gets out of his home ballpark in Seattle where it's a cavern. He gets into Arlington here where it's a pretty neutral park. And then Texas, a 113 WRC plus, uh, 182 ISO. These are problems, friends. These are definite, definite problems here for Luis Castillo. But yet, I think that his mix fits in nicely to be able to pull off the heist here. Corey Seager's back in this lineup. That's never fun because he's very good at like all of the baseball things. Adolis Garcia, Josh Young, uh, Nate Lau from the left side, uh, Jonah Heim, great stuff uh, up and down that lineup for Texas. Offensively, they've been juggernauts. There's really nothing to say about it other than that. And John Gray on the other side also makes me a little bit encouraged. I think this is a sneaky good spot for him going up against Seattle, who's been just a disappointing lineup outside of Jared Kelnick. We're looking at a 99 WRC plus 25.4% K rate. You can rack them up against them and John Gray, the Ks have been way down for him, too. That's kind of been a story of this season. A lot of veteran pitchers, and John Gray, he's only 31. It's not like he's the age of a Verlander or Scherzer, but we're seeing pitches, uh, pitchers have these drastic changes in K rates who have been in the league for a long time. Maybe it has to do with the pitch clock. I think we'll be able to look back and reverse engineer quite a bit, and it'll be pretty self-explanatory, but we have seen some down K years for John Gray in the past. He had a really weird season in 2020 with just a 12.6% K rate where the velocity came down. He got that back up to 24.4% and 25.7% in 21 and 22 respectively, but down to sub 20%, just sub 20%, 19.9% K rate right now, 4.72 expected ERA. It's nerve wracking, even against Seattle, but yet I like Castillo stuff. And I like the fact that John Gray is still finding success. And well, I think it's pretty safe to say that the fastball velocity hasn't really changed in a draft drastic extent still throwing at 95 96 in that department it never has really spun so maybe the k's come up but at least it's a good matchup so for a half unit this is standing out very nicely for me at 7.6 runs projected 8.5 being the over under here give me the under yeah that's your first standard like of the day wild stuff oh framber valdez why couldn't you have just pitched, made my life easy? But thinking about that one, obviously they ended up mixing it into a guy, broke him down, and I didn't even really like what I saw in the premium Discord, so we didn't bet it. Let's bet it here today, shall we? Except for we can't. 
sad stuff. It's going to be Framber Valdez and Shohei Otani this time around. A little bit different than we were looking at for a matchup on Thursday. Again, your knee-jerk reaction. These are two of the best pitchers in baseball. They're squaring off. The unders obviously make sense. Shohei Otani goes out against Miami, gives up just one earned 10 Ks there. His last outing looks great. Framber Valdez, he's probably your front runner to win AL Cy Young, uh, whereas Shohei Otani is going to be your front runner for MVP, it seems like, every single year forever. Already inside of minus 130 over at DraftKings Sportsbook to win MVP. Aaron Judge plus 400. Thought about throwing a number on that. Again, Shohei Otani pitcher injury something could show up i don't think that those are the proper odds I thought, ugh, now i'm even talking myself into an aaron judge play there once again but as it stands right now these are just two electric pitchers i obviously think seven and a half is about appropriate and yet i think because of the offensive prowess here of both of these teams against these respective hands i would lean towards the over which is wild to say you get the crawford boxes short porch over there in left for a lot of home run hitters here in this lineup, not just the fellow Otani left on left here against Valdez. But if they are able to get the ball in the air, which is a huge if against Framber Valdez with an electric ground ball rate, you still have this Angels team with a 120 WRC plus and 171 ISO against lefties. You get Brandon Drury, Mike Trout. He's pretty good at baseball. I heard a number of those guys up and down the lineup. Taylor Ward starting to have a pulse. That's cool. Number of pieces from the Angels that I think are at least dangerous here. And then for Otani, we've seen this issue of the magazine before, friends. It's walking too many batters, gives up a long ball, and then you're running into an over. So at seven and a half, I think it's a stay away still. This entire game feels like that. But an over, I'm going to be leaning on the over and looking at K-Props from this one. BetMGM talked about him before, but just to recap for you, you go to the video description box below, you click on that link, it takes you all of about two minutes to sign up, you use promo code OSINSIDER as an Odd Chopper Insider, and you will get yourself two months of the premium Discord just by trying out BetMGM. And when you try it out, you're going to get an opportunity to make your first bet, and when you do, if you do not end up winning it, you're going to get that amount of money up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. Yes, it is that simple. It is that easy. And hey, we are odd shopper after all. We talk about finding the best single line at every single book, every single time when you're making these bets. So why not get access to another one? I know you have your DraftKings sports books, your FanDuel sports books. And if you don't, you can sign up for those in the video description box below as well. But BetMGM, they're giving you this great incentive to try out their product. And then, well, you get to hang out with me for two months. That seems like fun, right? Right? It's only if you're 21 and over. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. All righty, y'all, back to the picks. The Guardians of the Galaxy. Facing the Minnesota Twins. Uh, my parents are going to be at this game, so... That usually means the Twins win. I think they're undefeated this season. I think they're 3-0 or 4-0 this year. I don't know. They're driving from Sioux Falls. Shout out South Dakota. Either way, Bailey Ober on the mound. He's been fantastic going up against Aaron Savale. And uh, I'd rather have Ceviche than watch Savale pitch. I'm not even fancy like that. I don't even think I like Ceviche. It's just he sucks. I don't like him. 4.45 expected ERA. He has found ways to be serviceable in the past. 3.80 expected ERA. It was actually worse than his 4.92 ERA last season. But no velocity, no go-to strikeout pitch. And well... It's kind of a problem when you're facing big league hitters. You're eventually going to get hit up by some lefties. And well, there is some lefty power. I can't stomach recommend Kirilov yet again here. I can't possibly do it. So you know what? We're going to shift things up here on this program just for like a little bit of juju because I bet Joey Gallo and Alex Kirilov the last two days. They haven't done jack diddly squat. We'll see if they do something for me here on Thursday. There's still time. Still time, gentlemen. Actually, no. Kirilov got his basis prop, so I don't completely hate him. But instead of putting Kirilov on the card here, I'm going to go Joey Gallo to home run. Yes, the guy who's still projecting out nicely for me, as long as this number is plus 300 or better. And let me just say, sometimes it's astounding. I'm pretty good at being able to gauge where these home run bets are based on a spreadsheet that tracks it over the last couple days, and then what their history is against specific pitchers or what that pitcher is going to be adding to the table. And then obviously what the bullpen is going to be. I talked through the entire thing in premium discord. Trust me. It was a lot of fun. You should join it over here by signing up at MGM. But Joey Gallo is going to hit a ball to the moon. He's going to hit it to target center, which is out right field in target field. That's really all I got for you. Joey Gallo goes yard. Not a surprise. 
Next up, we have Colorado and Kansas City at Kauffman Stadium. Happy Jordan Wiles Day. Maybe he's the new Jose Barrios this season. It's getting eerily close to me calling him that, but Chase Anderson this season, don't know what the hell got in his Cheerios at the beginning of the season, but something fantastic. 1.31 ERA now, bro. Do you even lift, bro? He's kind of swole too for like, he's an older dude. 10 Ks, hasn't struck out anybody really. That's at five starts, 10 Ks, but a 0.97 whip. Pretty effective stuff that we're seeing out of him here. I don't buy it. Do you buy it? I don't buy it. Just a 12.5% K rate, 370 expected slugging is just outperforming expectations. And he has a 3.90 expected ERA and a 1.31 actual ERA. Something does not add up. Something is not making sense. And well, something has changed within me. Something is not the same. That was from Wicked. Where did that come from? But Kansas City here, uh, they're terrible against righty. 78 WRC plus. So why am I going out of my way to target them here? Well, because Jordan Lyles is the guy on the other side of this mound. And uh, well, as mad as I am a out Colorado. I mean, I didn't know Chris Bryant was going to be going on the IL going into that game and then saw he wasn't in the lineup and I immediately just went great on Wednesday. Knew where that one was heading. Thursday, we got Ryan McMahon uh, bases across and one and a half uh, hits plus uh, what did I have? One and a half hits plus RBIs plus runs. There we go. Found it. We'll start mixing those in a little bit here too. I finally got my table updated in a way where I can really project those out nicely. Fun talk. Glad you don't give a shit. Cool. Colorado, definitely want to be targeting them. Uh, well, like their offense going up against this guy, Jordan Lyles. A 360x Woba, 518 expected slugging, just a 16.6% K rate. It's going to look disgusting there, but at least we're having jo Jordan Lyles out there as a right-handed pitcher. It always felt felt a little bit weird to have lefty on the mound and Tyler Henry and not have Chris Bryant in that lineup. Here, it's a little less egregious when it's going to be, uh, it, or it would be right on right. From Ryan McMahon, Mike Moustakis, Nolan Jones, who, Nolan Jones, he's back in the party, and Brenton Doyle back then, Hoes didn't want him, now he's hot. Hoes are on, on him. Baseball players, am I right? So the over of nine, friends, we like it. We give it a thumbs up for a half unit, and we continue on our merry way. Happy weekend. The White Sox hosting Detroit here. A little AL Central action. What could be better other than everything? This division sucks. My division, my team's division sucks. It's generally something you should cheer for. But either way, Reese Olsen making his debut. Hey, that's exciting, right? I'm sure he's probably really good, right? Detroit wouldn't just call up somebody who's terrible, right? He's got a 6.38 ERA through 10 starts and a 1.75 whip this season at AAA. He had never been higher than AA ball in 2021 and 2022 with the Erie Sea Wolves. It's a fun name. And then he went to the Toledo Munhens. It's an even more fun name. And just got worse because again, AAA hitters, they're going to eat him up if you're not good. And he's just apparently not good. So why are they calling him up here? And Detroit's making a run in the division. Like, they've been winning baseball games if nobody's been watching. I mean, we've been backing Erod in times, and now he's on the IL, so that's sad. Probably not going to be doing that for the near future. But we got Spencer Torkelson actually hitting hard baseballs, living up to his billing. We have Zach McKinstry, who started really hot with this ball club. Uh, Kiel Badu, meh, Kiel Badon't. But we definitely have some other guys that uh, need to improve for them to continue to make a run. Nick Madden, Javier Baez, we know what they can or what he can do from time to time. Hard hits have not been there for him. Again, getting to be his elder statesman self in this situation here as well. But as it stands right now, this is unfortunately going to be just a lean on the White Sox side, mainly because, well, we don't have a line and that makes it difficult. But Mike Clevenger, I believe it is going to be who comes off the 15 day IL to start on Friday. It's not confirmed. It's probably why it's not on my page, but I think he's going to be the guy who's there. He's not the Mike Clevenger of old back in his Cleveland days. And yet I think he's an all right back in considering how bad I project this Olsen character to be. So there you go. White Sox money line, definitely my lean. We'll see what the books decide to do. If it's outside of minus 150, just stay away. My boys are all grown up. They're so grown up. Look, you have your year-long leagues. You have your dynasty leagues. And two pitchers for the Arizona Diamondbacks that I've talked about for years are Zach Gallen and Friday's pitcher, Merrill Kelly. 
I love them both so much. Merrill Kelly's on the mound here facing, oh God, the Atlanta Braves. That's not fun. But he's going to be facing off against Charlie Morton here in this one. And Charlie Morton, 24.5% K rate, 38.7% hard hit. Yay, these are good things. 265 expected batting average and now facing an Arizona team that just had an exciting walk off there with Mr. Corbin Carroll. Couldn't go yard for me, but you know what? I'll I'll forgive him. Wish he had ran that out for a double, but it, he shouldn't have. Because, well, if he gets tagged out, that would be the worst way to lose a baseball game of all time. So congratulations to his walk-off single. Drove into game over for the Colorado Rockies. They got swept. Not that that should surprise anybody. But we've got Merrill Kelly here. And, well, he's the star attraction for me. He's doing everything well. A 300 x Woba, 362 expected slugging, 27.4% K rate. Throws an assortment of pitches, 6.4% barrel rate, though, is just yummy. He is 34. He's getting up there in age. And, well, it's a little surprising to see a 27.4% K rate. But I think there's some pretty easy explanations for why that could continue. We've seen the velocity stay exactly the same, but I want to pay attention, and this is kind of the first thing my mind always goes to when I see velocity identical, what happens to the spin rate? His fastball, because he's never been somebody who threw it fast. He's 92, 93, pretty much on the gun every time. But he's gone up from 2,358 RPMs on that fastball to 2,389 for an average. That is a drastic change. We're talking 40 RPMs on a pitch that already had movement attached to it. That's exciting stuff. And it might not seem crazy because his changeup is his calling card. It always has been the 35.2% whiff percentage. He can get that thing to just, batters just hit that directly into the ground. They really hit his curveball into the ground. But a 35.2% whiff percentage on the changeup, 24.3% this season with an 18.1% put away percentage. If that fastball maintains and the curveball continues to be moving like it is, uh, it's going moving a lot. 2615 RPMs compared to 2549. The spin's just up. And so post sticky stuff, I think a lot of pitchers might have needed to make adjustments. I think Merrill Kelly's figured it out because he's a vet. He knows how to pitch. I'm excited about backing him in terms of K's. Now, do I want to go out of my way to try to pick on the Atlanta Braves here on the money line? No, 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 I do not. Not at this number. I think we could be getting a better number than this in a lot of scenarios. And if I really wanted to do that, I'd be just taking the plus one and a half on the Arizona side. Although it's not projecting out all that well. Uh, minus 146, best available number on that on the FanDuel Sportsbook. But I think strikeouts are still going to be available because you look at this Atlanta team, uh, 13th, 23.3% K rate against righties, 98 WRC plus. I expected them to be better because I don't know, Matt Olson's a part of your team, but... Other lefties have had a little bit of a struggle bus situation here. Eddie Rosario has been in like a two-year slump since that World Series victory, which, again, I don't think they care. Him and Jorge Soler just ran the table in that. That was fun stuff. But I am definitely going to be betting some kind of a K letter here on Merrill Kelly if the numbers are right. If you want to know if I end up betting it, for sure. Again, because sometimes with the Kadai Senga one, you get six and a half with plus money. That's good enough at times. But I think the Ks... I think it's going to open in that five and a half, six and a half type range. And I want to see where the juice lands there, but I want to be laddering him. So like maybe a half unit, quarter unit, seven Ks, eight Ks, all the way up to that AK number. I know that was a lot of information to just say lean on the screen, but I hope you are listening to the analysis, why it is that I think certain things make sense for certain pitchers. And then of course, the most important facet, what ends up being the number tomorrow? Because well, if it's crazy, we just stay away. Not staying away from this one in any way, shape, or form. We've got the San Diego Padres hosting the Chicago Cubs. Jamison Tyon here on the mound for the Cubbies. Let's start with him here. It's been tough, man. 8.04 ERA, 1.69 whip. It has just not been there in any way, shape, or form. Not getting the swings and misses here in the latter stages here of the season. Really not putting things together uh, in any kind of a good capacity. Oh, good. Carlos Correa and Byron Buxton leave the game. Awesome. Love seeing that alert while I'm live here on a lock. <sighs> Whatever. Let's jump over to Michael Waka because this is why I'm going to be backing the Padres pretty heavily. This is my favorite play here of the day. Waka, 31.3% hard hit percentage and a 6.1% walk rate. Now, he's always been good at avoiding the walks, at least since... 2018, 2019 in that range. When he did fight some troubles in that department, he's been elite since then in that department. But 
The Kings are up ever so slightly, just 1% from last season. But the big thing for me is that hard hit is way down. We're talking in 2021, he was around 43%, 35.4% in 2022. If he is just giving up a 31.3% hard hit percentage the rest of the way here, you want to be early to the party on backing him in these spots. And Michael Waka, he's always felt like a boom bust option to me. He's just been consistent. The last five outings, he's had five quality starts with just three earned runs given up. I'm not sure about all of the changes to the mix. I'm not sure I buy into a 3.45 ERA and 1.10 whip long term here, but there's no doubt he is winning ball games for the San Diego team right now. And I think you just ride the wave. He's got a good feel for the fastball. It would seem at the moment where I guess, uh, yeah, the fastball and the curveball is non-existent here in his pitch mix, which I'm kind of happy about because it's not a very good pitch. Definitely his worst pitch. Feeling pretty good about the San Diego Padres at this kind of a number. And yes, the Cubbies, they're pretty good. But just a 99 WRC plus against righties, happy to be firing up against them. When you're talking about just outside of standard juice here, well, a little bit outside of it. Minus 154 on FanDuel Sportsbook here. That, my friends, is a lock button play when I have it around minus 185. Yeah, that's wild to see us picking on the Cubs like this. Not much to say about this one, and I mean, it's going to be an incredible baseball game to watch. We've got the Yankees and Dodgers, two elite arms, Severino and Kershaw, going for their respective ball clubs, and well, Clayton Kershaw. Everything I said about those old vets not really knowing how to pitch, and maybe it's a pitch clock thing, throw it out the window with Clayton Kershaw. He's just good. 32.1% hard hit percentage, 29.4% K rate has found himself in some interesting situations against some teams with some righty power. So this will be a fun one, but yeah, four one out for Oswaldo Cabrera, I suppose, just got sent down to AAA. They ended up calling back up Franchi Cordero. Life comes at you fast. That is brutal because he was definitely, I mean, he was supposed to be a guy for them. Not everybody pans out like Aaron Judge is kind of what we're learning, but Luis Severino, 1.59 ERA. He's just two starts into his 2023 tenure here. 11 and a third innings, 10 Ks. A lot still to be determined here, but 0.79 whip. He's just a good pitcher overall here, and well, he's got to avoid the walks, and well, it's also terrifying to be facing the Dodgers with their 115 WRC plus against right-handed pitching. So have fun. Good luck to you. But I would actually be leaning the Dodger side if we see Severino run into some major issues here. I think you're going to still find Kershaw be successful going up against this Yankee squad. And, well, they played some really good baseball up in Seattle. But overall, they have a 103 WRC plus against lefties. I expected more for a team that has Aaron Judge hitting a bajillion homers every single time out. So I'm leaning towards the run line, actually, minus one and a half. If I'm going to be wrong, I might as, be, might as well be wrong if the Yankees just light up Kershaw instead. If it ends up being a close game here, so be it, minus 140 if you missed the boat on that one. But I think you don't have enough sample size here on Severino being back in the majors. I expect him to be good, no doubt about it. But if he ran into a buzzsaw, it would definitely be the Dodgers that would do it. And just a tiny, tiny little like to get ourselves out the door and into the weekend, onto the beaches. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. We got Logan Webb going up against Dean Kramer. I think you know by now, I am not a big fan of these Baltimore starters. You got a couple of them that have decent enough stuff. I've, I've kind of turned a corner on Wells, but I'm definitely not... Uh, turning the corner on Kyle Gibson and Dean Kramer here in this rotation. He's got a 386 X Woba, 547 expected slugging. There's really nothing that he has in terms of an arsenal that has me remotely worried. And then San Francisco, fifth best in baseball against right-handed pitchings in terms of runs created plus 109 WRC plus in that department. They're going to strike out a lot from time to time, but they definitely have some lefties who can make you hate your life. So have fun with that, even in that ballpark. And then Logan Webb. He's really rounded into form this year. A 2.75 ERA, 1.07 whip, and everything I was talking about with quality starts, he has not had a start under five innings all season long. He has had only one start that hasn't gone six innings this entire season. He's coming off 11 Ks and just one earned against Milwaukee. He's only given up three earned in his last four starts. These are wild numbers that I am reading off here for Logan Webb. It has me encouraged. I think the combination of Kremer wanting to target him. And yeah, Baltimore, I'm going to give them a little bit of respect here and not lock it against that lineup because they are good. But San Francisco minus one and a half here. When you start talking about numbers like this, even in this ballpark that generally suppresses runs, 
plus 135, plus 136. Those are kind of your numbers over at DraftKings and FanDuel. That's good enough for me. Minus one and a half on San Francisco. Happy weekend. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. You know what to do. Go to that comment section below. Let me know your favorite plays heading into the weekend on Friday. Check out BetMGM, only for 21 and over. If you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Check out all the great things we have going in that video description box below, whether it's Odd Shopper, whether it's BetPro, whether it's any of these great things that we have offered up at Stochastic and Odd Shopper for your betting enjoyment. And by enjoyment, I mean helps you win some freaking money. That's what we're here to do. It's June, baby. It's a new month. I'm excited for these MLB streets coming up. Also have NBA Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks going out throughout this NBA Finals. Actually, I think the game's on Sunday, so I won't be doing that one. Aton will have you for that. I'll be back for game three. Friends, until next week, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the MLB streets on Friday. <laughs>